All right. Hopefully you've got your audio card or your device set up. You got Reaper looking the way you want it. And you got your VST plugins all configured and ready to go. Uh, I changed my theme a little bit. Looks a little bit more Cubase or something now. I don't know. I like it. Um, a little uh, heads up. I got Rugrats and everything running around in the background. So if you hear random noises in the background, that's what it is. All right, let's get going. Let's get on this mix challenge. To do that, we're going to insert media files. We're going to browse to where we got our files stored at. And we're going to go ahead and hit open. It's asking if we want them on separate tracks or if it wants to, or if we want to combine them all into one track. We obviously want separate tracks, so we're going to hit yes. All right. And there's all of our files imported into Reaper. First thing that has to happen, this is <laughs> this isn't a rule. This is just uh, what I have to do. I have to put these tracks in an order that makes sense to me. So I am going to shift these around a little bit here. Put them in the proper order. This isn't any kind of rule. This is just uh, something I have to do. You'll notice too that across the bottom in the mixer, they also now are in the same order as I, as I put them in up here. Okay, that's not, <laughs> that's not a rule or nothing. That's just uh, something I have to do. Okay, now I can deal with it. Uh, first order of business, let's create a drum submix. So I'm going to pick right around here. You could pick anywhere you want. I'm going to add a track. Add a new track. Okay. And the significant part of this is this track has to be above what you're going to be submixing. So in this case, I want to submix from the kick all the way over to the room. All right. That'll make more sense in a minute. Let's go ahead and rename this drum submix. Now, submixes on just about every other DAW, you're going to use like a send return type thing. Reaper is a little different. We're going to use what they call folder tracks. So let me go. Let me show you how to set that up. This right here, which looks like a folder, we're going to hit that. Okay, and it gave us this little bracket. Now, what this little bracket is saying is, what do you want included in this folder track? So we're going to browse down. And we're going to go as far down as the number of tracks that we want included in the submix. Um, I'm not totally sure if that's going to make a whole lot of sense, but uh, starting from the drum submix, which is the folder, the root folder, I want all of these tracks up to the room track included in that drum submix. So all I'm going to do is hit this again. And now what's happened is, I wish I could make my screen a little bigger, but I'm trying to save file size, is from here, see how that's kind of bracketed like that, all the way up to our drum submix, is now in one folder, or aka submix. Let me, let me show you what that means here, let's play it. Oop, hang on. I gotta set this up so you guys can hear it. There we go. Ignore that. All right, let's play it. Now, now I'm gonna solo out our submix. All right, and now all we got is drums. We can solo out individual pieces. All right, simple enough. Now we got a good drum sub mix going. Let's go ahead and let's start working on the kick. So let's solo that out. Turn the loop on so it just keeps playing over and over. Let's take a listen. All right. First thing first, let me get this normal size here so you guys can see it. Let me go to my VST plugins now. 
for what I'm doing here, I'm going to use Voxengo's Gliss EQ. The reason why I'm using it is because it's big, it's easy to see, and it's also going to give us some uh, frequency feedback too. So let's go ahead and insert that. Any EQ will work. I'm just using this for because uh, it's going to give us a good visual as well as an audio. Alright, this is Vox Ungo's Gliss EQ. And this is our kick drum frequency playing in the background here. So let's go ahead and let's get a little thump going here. Alright. Yeah, let's get another one going here. And I know that this area from like 100 to 250 is going to be busy with a bunch of guitars and basses and every other thing in there so we're going to suck some of that out make some room for it and that's sounding pretty good let's go ahead and maybe throw a little bit of mids in it yeah, it's got that kind of boxy kind of sound we'll go to extremes here we'll go all the way up and down Yeah, maybe a little bit's not going to hurt. Now all the uh, click, all the attack, that, that metal drum sound that uh, everybody talks about, that's all right here. And I like to use a high shelf on it to pull it up or down. It just seems to sound a little more natural than jacking it with a peak EQ. So that's, I'll, I'll run this through extremes and you can hear the difference. I'm hearing quite a bit of click for what we're going to be doing here, so I'm going to tone it down a little bit. Yeah, that's about all I want to do there. Drag this guy over so he fits. And let's go with uh, some kind of compressor. Pull it up a little bit. Uh, I'm thinking I'm just going to use Blockfish for this. Don't need anything super complicated. Let's take a listen to what Blockfish does. Here, how it's kind of mashing it down a little bit there. And this is the how fast it's going to attack it. In other words, we want to make sure that we let the attack through and then start to clamp it. So if we clamp it too hard, see we lose like the the attack of it. Now let's open it up a little bit. sounded pretty good and then for some reason I, I always just hit the air button I'm not sure why but I will and this is the uh, saturation portion of Blockfish which is really the secret weapon here if we start kicking this guy up he'll start getting really fat now I'm just going to eyeball my level real quick I like my kick to be sitting right at about minus 6 dB. Um, that's kind of the spot where I start, and then I kind of base everything off of that. So right now I'm coming up a little bit short, so I'm going to jack the input or the output a little bit. All right, that's good. Let's uh, move on to the snare. We're going to call that good for now. We can always come back and revisit it. All right, snare drum. Same scenario. We're going to throw a Gliss EQ on it. Yeah, I think you guys can see that. And right off the bat, we got our old friend uh, Low End Rumble Junk over here. So we're going to throw a high pass on that and get rid of him. And here's something I do pretty much across the board on drums. You can call it a rule if you want. <laughs> um, this this 200 hertz area, for me, is the key for getting a good drum sound. Or snare sound, I should say. I'll tighten it up even a little more here. But that's really where the thwack, that, that nice low end boom I'm looking for out of a snare drum is at. So I'll run it through the extremes here and you can kind of hear it.
Come on now. Okay. Sounds good right about there. And let's get some mids going in this thing. See if we can find some good stuff over here. Tighten up this cue a little bit. I have no idea why Vox Angle goes with such a wide cue. A little bit of pop in there. Yeah. Let's put some pop in there. Let's go with another high shelf and bring the highs up a little bit. Give it a little sizzle. work fine. Let's go ahead and add in our good friend Blockfish again. Start hitting the snare and smashing it down a little bit. Listen, let's, you know, just listen to what's going on here as I move this around. If we move it all the way over. Hear how you get all that after ring? It's like your Mushuga snare there. <laughs> um, I'm going to loosen it up a little bit here. Somewhere around there. And again, I want to let the attack through and then start to smash it. That's good. Let's wait for it to come back. we got to hit the air button by default. Let's add a little saturation here. Now with the snare, you got to be careful here because you go too much, you'll start to get this. Doesn't sound good to me, might sound good to you, but go, you know, do whatever sounds good to you. I like it, right about there. And I like my snare to be a couple dB over my kick. Right now it looks like I'm hitting around six, so I'll give it a little juice. And that looks perfect right there. Let's bring that down. Let's solo our submit. Are so good. Let's uh, listen to our snare bottom here. I'm not going to do much with this. I think I'm just going to maybe hit it with blockfish and bring it out a little bit. Get a little more uh, saturation signal, whatever you want to call it. And we got to hit the air button. <laughs> That's good. Let's get a uh, level between the snare top and snare bottom. This is by ear. There's no rules here. I'm doing what sounds good to me. Nah, right, that'll work. Let's move on to the hi hat. Not a whole lot happening here. We're just gonna. Oop, wrong one. We're just gonna maybe try to get rid of some of that uh, white noise pss, 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 sound going on there. That's gonna get irritating real quick. Let's just throw a uh, low pass on it. Try and minimize it there. <laughs> 